Rex and Ahsoka stood together observing the tunnel of blue light they were passing through as the Venator they were in cruised through hyperspace. It's beautiful, isn't it? Rex said. We see it almost every day so it becomes a numbing blur and we're so focused on the war and the daily problems it gives us, we've become turned off to life happening around us. Well, there's going to be a lot more time for reflection soon, Ahsoka mused aloud. With General Grievous dead and the Separatist forces in tatters, this war is all but one. That's what I'm afraid of, sighed Rex. Us clones were built and bred for war. Our aging was even accelerated in order to get us on the front line sooner. But now, what are we supposed to do? You can't take a soldier who has seen the horrors of Umbara, plunk him down behind a desk and expect him to just assimilate into a peaceful life. This war gives us purpose. They will, of course, need some kind of standing army to help with the reintegration of the Separatist systems back into the Republic. And then there are the inevitable pockets of resistance that will need to be dealt with. But I see your point, Rex, Ahsoka replied. This will all have to end eventually. And will the Republic still need a fully functional galactic army? I feel as if I'm in the same boat as well. The Jedi team teach peace and a life dedicated to keeping that, but I've been trained to fight since I was young and I've spent most of my life fighting, so what purpose does someone like me have outside of that? This thought hung in the air as the two friends contemplated their future and what it might hold. The silence was broken by an approaching officer, Commander Rex. The latest briefing has come in, he said. Shall we? said Rex, turning to Ahsoka. You go ahead. I'll get the highlights from you later, she replied. Rex saluted good-naturedly and headed across the bridge to the briefing room. Execute Order 66, Commander Rex, and under no circumstance is Ahsoka Tano allowed to leave that ship alive. It will be done, my lord. The full-body hologram of Darth Sidious winked out as Rex stood there rooted to the spot. The order he had just been giving blaring in his head like an alarm bell, making it almost impossible to think about anything else. The Jedi were a threat and must be eliminated. It took everything in Rex's power not to draw his blasters right then and there. There had to be some kind of mistake. Ahsoka couldn't possibly be the enemy now. She had sacrificed as much as anyone to defend the Republic. But good soldiers follow orders. What's the latest news, Rex? The door behind him opened as Ahsoka walked towards him ready for some news. He wanted to scream at her to turn and run, but his mind felt as if it was wading through quicksand. He just couldn't form the words. His body now felt like it was being controlled by a puppet. His hands were slowly reaching for his blasters. Um, is everything okay? What's wrong? As the question left Ahsoka's mouth, Rex whirled around, blasters drawn. Run, Rex gasped, somehow managing to regain, regain control of his senses for a bit. Find Maul. Then he and the other clones in the room opened fire on her. Ahsoka gasped and flipped onto her back, the blaster fire from Rex flying over her and taking out the two clones behind. Her. She leapt back up and over Rex's head towards the briefing room. She crouched on top of the hollow projector, deflecting Rex's blaster fire. She could see more clones rushing towards them, and using the force, she slammed the door and flung a nearby computer at the opening mechanism, disabling it. Now it was just her and Rex. She found it was all she could do to fend off Rex's blaster fires. He knew her fighting style well from years of fighting alongside her. Her mind was reeling. This couldn't be real. What was going on? Ahsoka knew she couldn't kill Rex, no matter what was going on. This was not him, and she needed to figure out how to bring him back. But for now, she had bigger problems. She could hear clones on the other side of the door breaking it open. She needed to vacate the premises immediately. As she flipped around, deflecting Rex's blaster fire, she spotted an air vent off to the side. Using the force, she ripped off the cover, which flew across the room and slammed Rex into the ground, knocking him out cold. Well, that was convenient, Ahsoka gasped as she dropped to one knee to catch her breath. She looked at Rex lying on the ground and up to the vent. For a second, she thought about lifting him up onto the vent and trying to escape with him, but who knew where it would lead and she did not want to be stuck up there with Rex when he came around. I'm sorry, I promise I won't leave without you, she said as Rex stirred and groaned on the ground. She leapt up into the vent and crawled off. Now it was time to find Maul and figure out what was going on. Darth Maul watched as two shock troopers entered the room and walked across the cell to the box he was being held in. The past couple of minutes had been a torrent of emotion for Maul. Thousands of voices crying out in pain and terror, and one dark evil voice laughing over it all his old master, Darth Sidious. One of the clones keyed open the door as the other pointed his blaster at Maul. So this was it, he thought as he closed his eyes. After all he had been through and done, he was about to be executed by a single clone aboard a random Republic ship. Suddenly there was a whoosh of air and the clone was slammed into Maul. He opened his eyes as Ahsoka Tanu dropped into the room and slammed the other trooper into the back wall, knocking him out. Did you do this? She snarled, holding her lightsaber up to Maul's neck. Did you turn the clones against me? No. It was Sidious. At first, I did not understand. He never revealed his full plans to me, but after feeling what I felt and seeing what has happened, my eyes have been opened. It's genius, turning the Jedi's own army against them, Maul laughed. Save it, Maul, Ahsoka said. You can gloat later. Right now, you're the only one aboard this ship not trying to kill me, and they will do the same to you in a second. We need to figure out how to escape. She cut him loose and stood back. Are we in agreement? I would have nothing to gain and so much to lose by killing you, replied Maul. We need to get to the hangar bay and see if we can steal a ship. They could 
could hear boots hitting the ground and voices coming near as the clones neared the cell. We're too late to leave by the door, said Ahsoka. Quick, back up into the air vent. As they are about to jump up, Maul caught her arm. Give me one of your blades so I can help defend us. Oh, you misunderstand me, Maul. We aren't on the same team. I just need you to leave. You seem to be able to do plenty of damage without a saber. And with that, she motioned up to the vent. Blaster fire cut through the vent directly behind them, forcing Maul and Ahsoka to dive forward, bursting through the grate, covering the vent out into the main hangar bay, which was full of clones ready for a fight. Ahsoka and Maul had just come from dismantling the hyperdrive, forcing the Venator to lurch out of hyperspace. But the abrupt and violent nature of their exit had damaged the ship, and it was careening towards a barren, unknown planet. Well, it would have been nice to get the lay of the land before we popped in here, Maul quipped as they dropped to the floor and stood up. Ahsoka Tanu, drop your weapons now, and both of you put your hands in the air. It was Rex, his blasters trained on them. Slowly, Ahsoka crouched and dropped her blades. What are you doing, Maul hissed? We need those. Rex is my friend. I know he's still in there. I have a bad feeling about this, Maul replied. Under order of Lord Sidious, you are to be executed immediately. Ahsoka could see his arms shaking as he pointed his blasters at them. You know this is wrong, Rex. It's me, Ahsoka. We met on Christophsis. You took me under your wing and helped make me who I am today. Rex's hands began to lower. Then, in a moment, they were back up. Good soldiers follow orders. Maul ripped up a chunk of the floor in front of them just in time to deflect the rain of blaster fire from Rex and the clones. Your friend is gone, never to come back. To think anything else will get you killed, Maul said to Ahsoka. Quick, grab your lightsabers and make for that shuttle. It's our best chance. He hurled the sheet of floor at the clones, scattering them like leaves. And using four speed, the two dashed towards the ship. They were just able to hop into the cockpit as more clones poured into the hangar, opening fire. Maul raised the ship and moved them out into the main opening while firing on the clones. Maul then turned the ship to the main control tower mounted on the back wall they had just escaped from and opened fire on it. What are you doing, Ahsoka Gaps? You're going to set the whole hangar on fire. That's the plan, said Maul. There's an emergency override in it. If the control tower is destroyed, the hangar doors open automatically in case any ships still need to escape. How do you know that, asked Ahsoka. I've been fighting the Republic for a long time, was Maul's only answer. Sure enough, the massive doors of the hangar started to open, but as they were about to leave, Ahsoka spotted a figure stirring on the floor. Rex. Ahsoka bit her lip. They were about to make their escape, and who knows how long this window would be open. But as she looked at her friend lying on the floor, she remembered the promise she had made in the briefing room. Maul, wait, she said, and hopped out of the cockpit. Stop, we don't have time, he bellowed after her. She ran over and came to a stop by Rex's body. He seemed to be unconscious, lying there so still. She began to drag him to the ship. We're so close, she thought, constantly looking around, scanning for any clones entering the hangar. They were almost to the ship, to freedom, when suddenly a single shot rang out. Ahsoka gasped. In her haste to get Rex to safety and not get shot herself, she hadn't noticed his free hand still holding one of his blasters, which was now pointed at her chest. Rex, she choked out and dropped to all fours, a fiery pain coursing out from where she had been shot, filling her whole body. She slumped to the ground, a look of betrayal etched into her face. As suddenly as it had come, the relentless order pounding in his head vanished, and he was left to process what he had done. The whole world around him turned gray as he saw Ahsoka's body lying in front of him. No. The word barely escaped his lips. The blaster fell from his hand as he crawled over to her. He barely processed Maul jetting out of the hangar in the shuttle. He couldn't think, didn't want to think. The tears began to slide down his cheeks as he looked down at the Jedi who had been one of his closest friends, who had just died trying to save him at the risk of her own life. Good soldiers follow orders, he whispered hoarsely. Good soldiers follow orders. This was probably the saddest story I've ever written, and I don't know that I want to try it again. Being betrayed by someone you love is a hard thing to write about, even if it's with fictional characters. I hope you found this story impactful and engaging. I feel like with each one of these I do, my writing gets a little bit better, and it's kind of fun to make videos where my mocks aren't the centerpiece, but just props for a larger story. I do have another what if already in the works, and don't worry, that one won't be as heavy. But that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and let me know if there are any other what if style stories you would like to see me do in the future and I will catch you in the next one. But until then, happy building.